Hello artist friends. I've been gone from YouTube for a long time. Life happens. I appreciate each one of you being here on my channel. Today I want to share with you how I painted a conch shell in watercolor. Seashells are so much fun to paint. So let's get started. I start with a good outline of the subject uh, that's been traced onto the watercolor paper. Then I take a small piece of adhesive putty and roll it around on the tracing to lighten the traced lines. This is a large painting. I will be working mostly wet into wet, small sections at a time. I'm very careful when I wet the paper down not to oversaturate it so that I don't have pools of water on my paper. I'm using a number eight round to apply lemon yellow to my painting. Working quickly as my studio is very warm and my painting will dry out on me so I have to keep it nice and wet so that I can have soft edges. So right here I'm wetting down the paper getting it ready to apply the lemon yellow. I have a fan in my studio so it blows air around and dries my painting out quickly so I've got that spray bottle right there by me so I can continue to spray and keep the water level to where I can have nice soft edges. I'm adding contour lines on the edge of the conch so that I can show the direction of the growth of the snail.
I'm using a number 8 round brush. I use this throughout most of the painting. I don't buy expensive brushes because I'm real hard on them, so I just use whatever I have around that works and does the job. I continually keep wetting the surface of the paper so that it doesn't dry out. I don't want hard edges, but right here I have moved over to another section so that uh, I can let the section that I just done dry. So while it is drying, we'll work on another small section. I do that one section at a time when I'm working on a large painting. I add lavender. I'm putting on a clear wash here, getting ready to add color. I'm using burnt sienna here, letting it fade down, pulling it down so that it'll fade away and create more form. My paper is uh, set at a 25 degree angle, so if I lay it correctly on my drawing table, it will run down and create real nice blending effects. So here we're doing the top of the seashell, doing the different layers there. It is important when working on large pieces like this that you work in small sections at a time. When one, one is wet, move on over to another area and paint it while that one is drying. I alternate back and forth with different sections.
I'm laying in burnt sienna and I'm making the lines go according to the growth of the seashell. Soft lines, keeping the paper moist and there I'm putting on a, a clear wash. Constantly spraying and keeping the paper wet. Putting down a light layer of yellow ochre. A thin mix. A very watery mix. Then we'll be going over that with burnt sienna. More burnt sienna taking on the shape of the seashell. Turning the paper around now so that I can get the water to flow correctly on this back side of the seashell. And I'm using Payne's Gray and Lavender. I make sure to let each layer dry thoroughly before adding the next layer. Build the colors up gradually so that you don't get a heavy, overworked, chalky effect. And if you wait and let the layers dry in between, you can also tell what the value is because the colors will dry a whole lot lighter than when you first put them down. So it's a good idea to let it dry completely before you add other layers. You cannot build color just by adding it wet on top of wet on top of wet. That don't work. Dropping in a little bit darker mix of Payne's Gray and Lavender, trying to create a little bit more, uh, excuse me, a little bit more special effects there, a lot more texture. And then we get this all painted in, we're going to drop in kosher salt and let it crystallize on there and make a beautiful natural looking texture on that side of the seashell. Don't let the water pool. As it drains down on a slant board, it can pool. So I always keep a tissue handy so that I can blot that up. We don't want it running all over the paper. So I'm sprinkling salt there.
putting a little bit of burnt sienna on there over yellow ochre. I use a variety of paints, all different brands, and so it's easier for me just to give you the color and you choose the brand that you would like to use. Putting in the lines the direction of that part of the seashell. Then we're going to take clear water and then we're going to lift up color to create some highlights. I put a paper towel there so that I don't mess up my paper and so the water won't accidentally drop on my painting. I don't like my skin to touch my work because the oils on your skin can resist the paint and it's also bad for the museum quality of your art. We're going to put on a clear wash here and then start adding more burnt sienna, wet into wet. No. Sorry about that. I have a 100 pound pit dane trying to get in my lap while I do this recording. It's starting to thunder outside and she gets so frightened when storms come. So she's trying to get in my lap and she's way too big for that. So anyway, we'll keep blending this Burnt sienna, create a beautiful edge on that seashell. I apologize for getting out of the range of the camera there, missing a few paint strokes. Keep a tissue in uh, your hand so you can constantly wipe and correct your painting. So we're blending a little bit more. Burnt Umper up there. Excuse me, it's Burnt Sienna. Sienna's got such a nice addition of yellow in it. It's a beautiful color. Creating a contour of that shell.
I was testing, testing to see if the paper was dry enough to start working in that area. Adding clear water, then I will add more burnt sienna to the painting there, blending it and giving it more depth. Adding more burnt sienna. Going to put it in kind of randomly so we can get a good texture going there. When we get that all done, we'll add some salt to that and let it crystallize on there and it'll give it a really nice, rough texture. I'm using a soft brush there to brush the salt away. Uh, I'm only brushing on the dry areas, but I'm being sure to use a soft brush so I don't scratch or injure the paper in any way. Taking that sticky stuff, that adhesive that you use to put pictures on the wall, I roll it in a ball and then I roll it on the, the drawing to try to lift up some of the uh, graphite off of the paper so it doesn't show so much so that's what I'm doing there Putting the paper towel down so I don't get my hand or arm on the painting. Now we're going to put on a clear wash and get ready to put down color on the inside of the seashell. Try to develop the uh, illusion that you can look up inside the shell. We will add a, a medium mix of cadmium red and cadmium orange. We're going to put on several layers, being sure to let each layer dry completely before we adding the next layer. And I want it darker from the inside and then lighter as it comes on out towards the edge. So it looks like I just put down wet on top of wet but I don't. I let, let it dry and then I add another layer and another layer as many as I need. Cad red and uh, cad orange. So I'm working over here on this other side now, adding a little bit more burnt sienna, building up the uh, form there of that outer part of the shell, taking my tissue and wiping off the edge of the shell to keep it light there, keep highlights in that area, just keeping a nice soft blend.
we're getting it uh, wet now around the outside of the shell there we're getting ready to build up a little bit of of the sand so creating a, a clear wash clear water wash using burnt sienna yellow ochre and a little bit of cat orange pulling it on down and creating the seafloor around the seashell you want to be sure to watch part two of this video I had to bust it up otherwise you'd be here for a year trying to watch this so uh, it's busted up into two parts, part one and part two. So if you like this video, be sure you check out part two. So we're bringing it on around. Keeping it a little bit darker on that right side. Once again, I got out of the side of the camera and missed a few brush strokes. Sorry about that. We'll work on that. So we'll let that part of the beach dry and we'll work on this other side. I use a old credit card to scrape the salt off of the painting when it's dry. I do it very gently so I don't cut or scratch the paper and then I use a soft brush to brush it off with. So on the, right here we're putting in some of the sky area and I'm using a mix of ultramarine blue and cobalt blue using a number 10 round. I'm sure I've only used a 10 round and about an 8 round for this painting only, those two brushes. Too many detailed areas to use a large brush. Okay, we'll let the sky area dry now and we'll 
go on down and work in another section. In this area I'm going to do a mixture of all the colors in my palette so that I can get a good range of colors here on the seafloor. We don't want it to be monotonous, we don't want just one color. So I'm just going to put a little bit randomly of all the colors that are in my palette. I try not to work with more than three or four colors in my palette. I can make any color I want out of those. And if you do that, you can randomly mix and match your colors and your painting won't turn muddy. Using a deeper mixture of Payne's Gray and Lavender will build up the value of the back of the seashell. Adding a layer on top of a dry layer. You can see how much that uh, bottom layer has lightened up. I love the combination of Payne's Gray and Lavender. It is just so beautiful. We live in the country here in Oklahoma. We have about three acres and we have some little critters. We have three little goats, some chickens, a duck and a goose. And every now and then our neighbor has a guinea and two turkeys that comes over to visit. I can hear the guinea coming up now. So if you hear a strange noise, that's the guinea. Not sure if he'll make it this far over, but I can hear him coming. Okay, so we're going to clean the salt off of there with a soft brush, and then we're going to do a, a clear wash. I'm putting clear water on there, getting ready to do another layer of color, build up more depth inside the seashell. More cadmium red and cadmium orange. And there again, you can see how much that lightened up. So don't be afraid to be bold and add a nice deep color because it will dry lighter. 
going to take and pull lines outward and this will help create the form of the seashell. Just gently pull the, the wet paint out and create the texture of the seashell flaring outwards. Going back in with another layer, see how that's beginning to look nice and dark in there? Like you could just crawl up in there. Conch shells have a lifespan of about four years. Well, that wraps it up. That will be the end of part one of how I paint a conch shell. Please come back and watch number two. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe.